The first reading from the Acts of the Apostles continues this story that we began last week when Peter and John healed that man and then they were brought in front of the Sanhedrin, the leaders, and were told never to speak the name of Jesus again. And they told us last week that it's up to them if you decide who should we obey. But we have no choice. We must speak the name of Jesus. And so today picks up the story. They're, they go back to their friends, to their companions, and they're recounting what had happened. And what is their response? But together with one voice to pray to God the Father. And they prayed from the Old Testament. They had searched the scriptures to see where their, their current situation had been foretold in the, in the Old Testament. And they found Psalm 2, the, the response to the Psalm we had to do today, is the one that they were praying to God. God, you are the maker of heaven and earth, of all the sea, reminding God of who he is, acknowledging God, who he is, and what he has said. And that they were almost rejoicing in the fact that this prophecy had come true for them. That they were standing in the truth of scriptures, the truth of prophecy, the truth of God the Father. And they, what did they pray for? They didn't pray for their persecutors to be demolished or to be taken away or to have a change of heart. They prayed for boldness to be confident in their proclamation of the name of Jesus and in his saving message. And that they, the Father's hands would be upon them as they did the many signs and wonders that were going to take place through them. They knew the power of Jesus and they were confident that they would continue. So they prayed for boldness. Where these this episode is taking place after Pentecost. So we are preparing for these next six weeks or so for that great outpouring, a renewing of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so Mother Church gives us these readings to kind of prepare us for what we should be expecting, for what we should encounter when the Spirit comes upon us again with power and with force. So one thing the Spirit of God kept, did is keep them together as one, no division. And we'll see that throughout these days, how the Spirit kept them together. So that unity is a sign of the Spirit. But this bold confidence, that it doesn't matter what opposition we face, that we are confident in the Lord, that He will be with us and never abandon us. And that through the powerful name of Jesus, the works will continue. And that lives will be changed. And that in, regardless or in spite of any opposition, that they have the confidence to stay fast to their faith, to hold fast, to live in hope. And this is what Jesus was telling Nicodemus. This reality that the early church was living is what Jesus was telling Nicodemus he must experience. And that if he doesn't experience this, this rebirth in the spirit, that he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot enter into that beatitude. And that same unless is applicable to each one of us as well. So oftentimes this question may be posed is, have you been born again? So Jesus says, unless we're born again, but maybe a more complete question is, is the Spirit alive in you? When you examine yourself, do you live with this confidence and this boldness, this reassurance in the presence of the Spirit and of Jesus in your life? This is the question we ask ourselves. And this is the grace for which we pray. Now, oftentimes, our lives are so cluttered with so many other things, so many other options, that while we put Jesus first, he's just merely one of other options. And so we have other things 
that are dragging us down and keeping us on this earthly kind of horizon. For we heard recently in the scriptures that if we've been born again, seek the things that are above, not the things that are below. So as we continue in this time of purification, this time of physical separation from the church, in a sense we can say, and this time that the Holy Spirit is allowing us to kind of reorient, to recenter, to properly focus, to face in the same direction of Mother Church, to look intently at Jesus, and to allow His Spirit to animate everything that we do, and to put away all these other distractions, all these other things that compete, and deprive the Holy Spirit of the full access to our lives. Let's come together. Let's be one. Let's desire this to be of one accord like the early church. And with humility, but with confidence to approach the Lord and then go out and be a bold and zealous witness. The Lord is with us. Do we believe? Amen.